Everybody thinks that Lazio Parma will be remembered for the late goal of Ciremobbe. Instead, Lazio Parma will be remembered for the revolution, tactical revolution of Simone Zaghi, playing a goalkeeper in net. What a revolution and what a performance. Right, Alistair? What a great idea from Simone Zaghi. Why? Why didn't he ever thought about it? Well, uh, yeah, I hadn't really thought of that aspect. It's, it was an astonishing piece of news to find at, what, about half past seven last night, Thomas Strakosha's return. Um, I had to kind of rub my eyes and, and take a second look at it to make sure I wasn't kind of dreaming. Yeah, very interesting. After all our talk a few days ago of how unlikely it is that Nzagi's going to rotate, he goes and I think he changed six players, was it? I mean, obviously a couple in force, but big turnover in the end. Yeah, and it's not a coincidence that Stragosha made an unbelievable save and last second later, Lazio scores. You know, this is what happens when you have a real goalkeeper in net. Yeah, although I tell you what, the... The moment in the first half when he when he took the ball to his feet and the Parma striker was charging him down and he just managed to get the pass away and then he got he got fouled and I was thinking oh my god if that had gone badly it just would have been the end you know <laughs> Inzaghi would have felt so vindicated but uh, no yeah it was good to see him back like you say yeah made made some important saves in a game that let's be honest was far less comfortable than we wanted it to be or that it really should have been against a team that's already relegated. Yeah, last podcast, I, I, I asked you if Fiorentina-Lazio was the worst match of the season. I, I take that bat, it back. It's definitely lazio Parma by far. I mean, I don't remember worst performance from Lazio this season. Well, I mean, where, where, well, where, where do we start? Where do you, what, what particular aspect do you want to start with? Um, I think, first of all, actually, I think we should mention Giro because, uh, I mean, we, we've we've spent years talking about this guy and how brilliant he is, but to reach 150 goals before the end of your fifth season is just an absolutely incredible achievement. If you think about that, you know, averaging at least 30 a season for that length of time um, is something that no Lazio player has done before in hitting over 20 goals in four, se- four different seasons now, uh, beating Beppe Signori. So, I mean, we, we don't need to tell anyone who listens to this podcast how much we love and admire Chiro, but we do need to mention it. I think, I think we should start a fundraising and build a statue of Monkey outside Formello because, I mean, <laughs> this, this man has been unbelievable. I mean, selling Chiro Immobile for eight and a half million, I mean... If he, he should award it a sort of uh, season ticket hold uh, subscription for Lazio forever. I mean, thank you again, Monkey. You have been astonishing. Yeah, what a guy. We've said it before, but say it again, probably the biggest Lazio of all, to be honest, considering the, the time and effort and dedication he's put into the, the cause of helping Lazio and uh, not helping Roma. Um, yeah, that- yeah, eight and a half million, Vittorio. You know what that could that could buy you? Um, could buy you less than half of Vedat Marici. <laughs> okay, let's talk about him directly. I know where you want to go. Um, you know what? I was thinking, okay, he played badly. But when Correa came in, I regret the substitution. At least Murici was fighting. Uh, I didn't see Correa coming with the eyes of the tiger, right? I, I felt that... Um... Yes, some the criticism you can see why it why it's come because you know he's he's had a few chances in that game and completely flopped to them. But at the same time, I didn't feel like we really you know learned anything else or that it was particularly worse or anything like that. I've, because I felt like the same frustration that I've said before about Marici, where I do feel that he is understanding the team better. He actually made some 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 good moves held the ball up well, his movement was good, he was supporting um, Chiro relatively well at times and carved out some opportunities for himself. Um, but it's just the same old thing. He, he just lacks quality. Um, and at this level, as a striker, you, you expect him to have more quality than he does. And even if you can see that he's helping the attack, you know, when he was played through on goal, 
every player, every striker is allowed to have a weaker foot. But for his right foot to be so bad that he completely drags the shot across goal so it looks like a pass to the defenders is just not good enough, is it? Yeah, but uh, what happened? We brought out Murici and suddenly we start putting the ball in the box. <laughs> I mean, you just took him off. You, 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 you can use that anymore. And uh, I'm not saying he's he played well, but, you know, compared to Correa and Caicedo, Caicedo, I think, touched once the ball in 20 minutes. Uh, then probably I prefer Kaise- uh, uh, Murishi fighting than uh, the other guys watching the ball. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's it's hard. It's hard to, at this stage of the season, really be be making too many big defenses of him. I think you just expect better. Um, just expect. It's like that. It's as simple as that. I think the quality that he possesses by now, we know, is is just not of a good enough level, probably to play for Lazio, but also. It's not. It's just not good value for money, um, as we mentioned with the Chiro signing. And we can't expect, you know, we can't expect that Iguitari ever every summer makes one of these absolute worldy signings like Chiro for eight million or Lucas for five million or Alberto uh, um, or Sergei. You know that these amazing deals he's had. We can't expect that all the time. But this was. It does feel like. Surely you should have seen this coming. I mean, I remember even at the start of the season when you spoke to a Turkish football journalist, he didn't sound very convinced about Marici as a goal scorer or as someone who had particular quality. Yeah, but he told us that he he was a fighter, someone that could really help. And uh, I, I think he need more time because, yes, it's the end of the season, but he didn't play that much this year, to be honest. So I think we have to give him another season. Said this... Yeah. I think we said it already, but the last two summer transfer of Iglitare has been awful. Uh, at the moment, Oli Lazar is a starter. Fares yesterday started, Alizar. And, oh my God, the first 10 minutes, I thought he was an absolute disaster. Uh, things get a little bit better, only because he couldn't continue that bad. But I think it's the first time that I was... Watching the match, I'll say, OK, please bring in Lulic because I had enough. Yeah, and it's probably, OK, maybe not as big a disappointment as Marici, but I think it's it's not far off that we've not seen more from Faris this season. Because, you know, when, when we came in, we were all kind of at least a little bit familiar with him from his time at... Uh, Spal and yep. Verona. We knew that he played in a similar system. We knew he'd got all the Serie A experience. We knew that he'd played uh, alongside Lazzari at Spal and very effectively. And so, yeah, it's it's disappointing, isn't it? I mean, again, I, I think all these... Uh, I, I always tend to say, with very few exceptions, that players do deserve a second season, but you know, a lot of the time that's because I feel like people need to settle or get used to a new team and league and so on. And I feel like Paris should have made more improvement by now than what we've seen. Yeah, especially because, as you said, it's not a new league for for Paris. It's Serie A where he already played. So that's and and the other thing that we said for the other players is uh, it's a new system. That's the three-five-two. It's I cannot believe that Spal was playing a different football and. We saw Lazzari, how he adapted quickly to, to Lazio's style. It's true that I thought this year uh, Lazzari had a better performance than last year, but already from January onwards, last year you could see that uh, Lazio, uh, Lazzari was a key player for Lazio, right? Yeah, and I do think Lazzari took a, a little bit of time to, to get into his gear and to become the player he now is, but... But that, like I say, that's kind of that's fine. That's expected of a new player that you yep. need a while to settle in. And, and Lazzari is quite a quiet guy, and you know he's not necessarily going to assert himself immediately. But yeah, I mean that's that's the kind of rate of improvement I think you expect from a player coming in from a team like that. It, it was quite. Fun. I mean, I read uh, 
uh, I think it was in Gazetta, the, the match report today, where they basically said that a lot of this game was kind of like a competition between Faris and Mauricio of who could have a worse match. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was probably a bit harsh, but um, it is what people are talking about today and last night, I think. Do you think Strakosha was man of the match? I don't know. I mean, it's it's tempting to say yes because we we wanted to see him there for so long and he made a very important save. But it's one of these games where it's quite hard to really say anyone was a particular man of the match, wasn't it? Um, I guess he didn't really do anything wrong and he did his job and he came up big when we needed him. Um, so yes, in that sense, why not? Yeah, because the problem is about the performance of yesterday is that apart from uh, Strakosha, nobody else played decent football or above average football because Chile Mobile scored in the last second. But apart from that, I thought he didn't have a, a chance yesterday. No, and wow, what, what a kind of amazing sequence of luck we had <laughs> to, to give him that, Unbelievable. that opportunity. I mean, it's the kind of thing that you see, there's a kind of goal I feel like we've watched Lazio concede several oh. times and just been screaming about it. So it was quite nice to see it, the ball just drop um, at the perfect moment. I mean, 95th minute, you know, we've seen this time and again with Lazio, but it's amazing to, to see it. It was no less special for it happening one more time last night. I have to say, um, I don't think it changes anything. Uh, I still don't think Lazio are going to manage top four um, because every, we needed, I think, someone else to draw up points last night and obviously everyone won. There's too much to do. Um, but it does mean Europa League is... is it's official, um, yep. Yep, yeah, it's official, qualified for the Europa League next season and have a chance to kind of finish with a nice positive note on Saturday at the old Rome derby. Second year in a row that we finish above Roma, officially. So that's another nice thing to, to mention. And Roma relegated to Confederation Cup if, if Sassuolo don't pass them, which at the moment I don't know what is better because, you know, Confederation Cup would be... Uh, no, Confederation League, I don't remember Com anymore. Conference League. Conference League, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's, it could be quite annoying as a competition, so it could take drain energy for the team from the team so but yeah at least we are back in uh, in europe league alistair and um, as we said i think since the beginning of the, this podcast we are hoping that next season we're gonna play the europe league to win it uh yes there's gonna be liverpool juventus and so on but i think lazio have to try to get as further as possible i mean if we reach the final great but i think we should be reaching the quarterfinals. That should be our aim this year. But that comes down to the rotation. Again, yeah. it comes down to the squad depth, the quality of options we have. And I think that's what we saw. It's been a constant theme throughout the season, the lack of quality and depth. And we saw it again yesterday, didn't we? You know, is I think yesterday is a good example of why it's quite hard to imagine Lazio going deep in the Europa League without sacrificing Serie A because... You take out Lucas, who's injured, uh, so who, sorry, suspended, Milinkovic, who's, who's injured, and you put in Cataldi and Parolo. That midfield is <laughs> not, not nearly at the same quality that it, that it would have been otherwise. Um, we've spoken about Morici as a backup, but, you know, take out Marasic, he's not a defender anyway, and you put in Patrick. I mean, it's, it's something that I think, on the face of it, you, it's tempting to say... Lazio can go far in the Europa League because we know Lazio's full-strength team um, can give a good game to most of the teams in that competition. But that would mean prioritising the Europa League, I think. Um, and we, we saw two years ago with the Celtic and Cluj group that as soon as Lazio start rotating in those midweek group games, hoping to just do enough to get through the group, so, sometimes that's not even enough and going out in the group stage of the Europa League. Uh, um, I'm not 100% with you this time. I thought Patrick played well. I thought Luis Alberto was a delusion yesterday. Uh, Cataldi did what he normally does. I don't think... Uh, the point is, I think Patrick, Cataldi, Escalante are fine for Europe League level. Uh, obviously, yesterday I was expecting much more from 
Luis Alberto, Correa when he came in. I thought they didn't do what we should be all expecting from them. I thought Luis Alberto was a little bit annoying trying to do tricks and, and things like that when we were still uh, not, not winning the match. So I, I agree saying that obviously a team like Napoli, Atalanta has a better depth than us. But let's be honest, if Roma reached the semi-final of the Europe League this year, I think <laughs> Lazio can do it. Uh, I don't believe Roma depth is better than Lazio, absolutely not. I thought even the starting eleven is not better than Lazio and the seasons show it. So you need a little bit of luck. But I think the most important thing is the manager has to send the right message to the players. It's not you're playing because I don't care about this competition. Is you're playing because I give you a chance. I want to win this match, and you have to prove me that you're worthy. Yeah, definitely, and it, yeah, it is. It is an opportunity to give game time, I guess, to to those fringe players who, who are struggling for it. But I still just think there's a lot of work needs to be done in the squad over the summer. And, yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, the thing is, it's it's the fifth year in a row now that Lazio have qualified for Europe, which I think is is an, is a record under Claudio Tito, and that does show great stability. Okay, yes, one of those years it was qualified qualifying through the Coppa Italia win rather than league position, but I think in general it does show the the amazing level of consistency that Inzaghi has managed to bring to this team, where he's com- all the changes of the squad and problems we've had off pitch and so on he's managing to keep this team competitive enough to be up there every single year and that you know as well as everything else that's a huge credit to Inzaghi that he's managed to keep that level of consistency uh, of results at the end of the season and as I know Vittorio we got more comments from Inzaghi this time about the contract sounding even even less convincing would you say than before Definitely, definitely less convincing. And uh, I mean, I- I'm concerned, honestly. There's something going on, and it would be nice if someone would explain what's going on. Uh, because we we move from, I'm going to sign the contract, don't worry, to we're going to sit down at the end of the season and uh, go th- through the things that went well and the things that didn't went well and, and uh, see how to go on. Uh, you can see it on a positive note, I would believe, like saying, OK, we are programming for the future, so we have to think of what work or what not. But you can see it definitely on the negative side and say, OK, you know, uh, maybe Zaghi said, I'm not happy about the transfer market. And Lotito could say, well, I'm not happy about uh, how many players have played, etc. So let's let's split up. Um, rumors about Tottenham interested in Zaghi. I don't believe that much. I don't think Inzaghi would be interested in uh, in Tottenham. I fear more Juventus, definitely more Juventus than uh, than any other single team. Um, yeah. But yes, it would be nice. To, Lazio season is nearly over. Three match are missing. Uh, how good would it be if Inzaghi came out and say, "Hey, I'm I'm renewing the contract. Uh, I'm staying here. We are, we're thinking about the future instead of well, we're going to talk at the end of the season." Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Would would be nice, and I think we're expecting so much change this summer anyway, or we're expecting a bit of a squad rebuild at least. That it would be quite, uh, it would just add so much work on top of that to to end up being in a position where you need need to appoint a new coach and then build a better squad. I mean, that would be. Um, I, uh, I don't know how that would be achieved, really. I mean, it's going to be, uh, you know, we had Omid Shakabai, one of our questions, asking about if, is a player revolution coming? Um, and I think that we, we that's what's kind of needed, and we mentioned that that's something we kind of expect or or require, but it's going to be difficult this summer. It's, it's going to be, I think, a really weird summer transfer market. I think there's going to be a lot of kind of swap deals and things going on because... Uh, the free free agent market is going to be ferociously competitive. That there there aren't a lot of teams in a position to spend a lot of money because they've just had a year and a half without gate receipts, um, and so it's going to be difficult for Lazio. But as we've said before, I don't know. Igor seems to be better at spending less money than spending more money. So maybe if he's 
restricted in how much he's spending, he'll end up getting better players than he has in the last two years. I don't know. Yeah, and, and definitely I'm expecting team like Inter to sell a lot of key players and not be able to resign uh, some of the at the same level. So it could be a very interesting season from the point that Juventus Inter and Milan would probably uh, sell key players. But at the same time, probably w- would have been the perfect season to sell maybe Luis Alberto or Correa and replace them with youngster and more uh, players ready to perform, etc. So, obviously, knowing who's going to be the manager next year would be would be a helpful on this point because you know you know Inzaghi is playing with a three-five-two. You know what type of player Inzaghi want. If another manager comes, then probably he, he will be looking for different players. So, as you already should be programming for this summer, uh, you should be already aware of who's going to be your manager. So, that that's annoying. Yeah, and like you, I am worried about Juventus. Obviously, we've seen we've seen these stories for years now, haven't we, about Nzaghi to Juventus. Yeah. Um, I think Nedved likes him. It kind of depends, obviously, what happens there, where in terms of who's actually making those decisions, whether Agnelli's sticking around or, um, you know, Pirlo, they have said they'll keep if they, he ah. takes to the Champions League. I don't believe that for a second because they said the same thing about Allegri and Sarri. Yeah, um, but happen. it kind of depends, I guess, they're in such a mess, whether they feel like a uh, coach like Simone Inzaghi is, is going to be the man they need to kind of reignite that project or if they want a bigger name, you know. As in Adin Zidane or or uh, Allegri return or whoever it is, so the McKenzie, or an, uh, no, I would turn down that job, Vittorio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm already on uh, 12 million a year here on Lazio Lounge. So. <laughs> Don't um, tell people. <laughs> anyway, should we should we look ahead to the derby a little bit? No. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it. Don't Absolutely no. Pretend that, it's not happening. Is it going to be the most uh, useless derby ever? Roma is already out. Lazio is already in Europe League. I think they have zero little chances to qualify for the Champions League. Uh, if we lose, we already won 3-0 the, 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 the other one. Uh, if we win, we already have won the... I don't know. I'm too <laughs> ahead of myself or you think I'll it's... Let- let me just say, I'm glad that you're not the manager of Lazio because that would be the most deflating <laughs> team talk I think I've ever heard. Getting the players round. Guys, this is the most pointless derby in the history of the Rome derby. Um, well, I can see where you're coming from in the sense that the derby is always a big deal, obviously anyway, because of what it means to the fans. But without the fans in the stadium, obviously, that takes takes away uh, the edge a bit as well. So it's even when there's nothing necessarily to play for in the league table, derbies are often very explosive matches. But on this occasion, it's going to be an empty stadium. It's going to be, well, you know, the, the good thing is if Lazio win, there's a decent chance that Roma dropped to eighth place, which would be very interesting. Um, maybe out of the conference league that you were talking about. But yeah, I mean, I think Lazio have to keep winning every match because... I, I don't think the top four is still on, but to be sure of that, let's you you know they have to win every remaining game and just see what happens. You know, it's the Europa League qualification is good; it's a good achievement. But winning every game for the rest of the season, winning a, a second Rome derby, um, would be an incredible achievement. And and I think they have to be considered favourites here because Roma's form has fallen off a cliff. Um, Paolo Fonseca is, you know, two days away from the beach. Um, <laughs> he's st- he's changed his formation out of the blue because they've got so many injury players, uh, injury problems. And they're basically just in a purgatory situation where they're waiting for Mourinho. Yeah. So there haven't been many derbies that I can remember in recent years where the odds are more stacked in Lazio's favour. Which scares me a lot, to be honest. So, but yeah, you know what? If I didn't watch Lazio Parma yesterday, I would agree with you. But after seeing Lazio Parma yesterday, I'm not sure Lazio is playing. I mean, after Fiorentina Lazio and Lazio Parma, we show that Lazio is playing better than than Roma. 
I mean, we have been awful in the last 180 minutes. And uh, without... Yes. Yep. I was just going to say yes, but it's a big game. And Lazio have been good in the big games, generally. Generally, yep. Roma are the complete opposite. I mean, they haven't won a single game against uh, another top seven team this season. I mean, I don't want to jinx it. I, I hate you. I, I know you hate when I talk like this. Yep. And I know that the Rome Derby has a history of whoever is the underdog tends to tends to win it. But you know, that's. It, I think it's easy to focus on negatives around Lazio's last two games, but it's not like Roma have been, you know, blowing anyone away apart from Crotone. Fair enough, but uh, it's Crotone. <laughs> yeah, we struggle even against Crotone. If I no, that's true. <laughs> You know, so... You That's know. before they were relegated, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Mirko Isavi should be back for the Derby, wearing a mask. So that's... I, I think this is probably the most important point. Um, I think without Mirko Isavi, this is a completely different team. Luis Alberto is the, the playmaker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but you feel when, Luis Albe- when Mirko Isavi is not there. I think you, it's easier to replace... Luis Alberto than Milinko Savic. Yeah, I think um, Milinkovic has probably been player of the season, to be honest. Um, I mean, he's been playing at a consistently high level throughout the season, which isn't something many Lazio players can say. There's been a no. lot of kind of... Up uh, and down this year. And yep. tro- yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I know, you know, we, we know what to expect from having Milinkovic Savage on the pitch, and I think having him back will be massive. Um, if he's back wearing a face mask and he looks like some sort of like baddie from a cartoon, which the people tend to, then that's going to terrify the Roma defence. <laughs> um, it'd be interesting to see what Roma are left with, though, because because of their injury problems, they've had to change players' information recently, and they've been playing, you know, some, some young kids from the Primavera have been starting to come into the team, and I, I I can't imagine that Fonseca will go experimental for a derby, but at the same time, he's been kind of left restricted massively against uh, Man United and, and Inter last night when they lost 3-1 by the fact that he just doesn't have that many players available. Um, I mean, I'm looking at their injury list here, and it's Zaniola, obviously, Calafiori, Lopez, Veritu, Spinazzola, Diawara, Smalling, Fazio... I mean, it's, it's a lot of players. I don't know how many of them will, are expected to be back, if any, but uh, it's a lot of midfielders, especially. Can I say something? Uh, it, missing Fazio and Paolo Lopez, it's a huge advantage for Roma. <laughs> huge advantage. Bring back Paolo Lopez. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think he's all right. Uh, but, yeah, obviously he gave us a nice assist in uh, Derby last season. Uh, the Derby of the goalkeeper assists that one. Yep. But, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's the Rome Derby. There's no point trying to make huge predictions. No. Nope. Uh, it's, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm too confident, but it would be a nice, it would be a really nice way to end the season to yeah, I'll, having I'll smash them back in January 3-0. To, to be able to, you know, do something similar again would be incredible. Yeah, obviously, obviously it would be. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that this team, Lazio, I'm talking about, switched off after Fiorentina Lazio. So that's my biggest concern. It's true that this is the last match probably. So, you know, if you, if you win this one, uh, then you can be okay uh, to end the season like that and maybe Zagreb will rotate and finally play some Primavera players after that. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I remember terrible experience at the Derby. So, you know, when you're a clear favourite, I'm always concerned. Uh, but, yeah, as I said, uh, if we win the Derby, it, Lazio will probably still be in the race for the Champions League. And, yeah, let, let's wait and see what happens uh, on Saturday night. And we're going to be back on Monday talking about the Derby and maybe we're going to have updates on the Simone Inzaghi situation. There are even rumours that Lotito is not happy about Iglitare. So, you know, there could be a huge revolution this summer, Alistair. 
yeah, um, I, I, I cannot believe that that would happen <laughs> to get rid of Tare and Inzaghi in the same summer. And I don't know, maybe Lotito will just end up appointing himself in all these positions. He'll be president, sporting director, coach. Maybe he'll be captain. He'll take over from Lulic at left wing back. Um, I, I can see it happening. Now that he can't run Salernitana in his, in his spare time, maybe he wants to take on all these extra jobs instead. Definitely, definitely. I can see it happening. Uh, thank you again, Alistair, for joining me. Uh, we'll be back, as I said, Monday after the Derby. Again, everybody, thank you for listening. Remember, we are on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, YouTube, so you can listen to Lazio Lounge wherever you want, wherever you are. Please, if you like our podcast, rate and review it on iTunes. And if you want to support us, we are on patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Membership starts at $2 a month. Thank you again, Alistair. Good night. Cheers.